Hello and welcome to this video from the DCGS. This is output 7 um, of the 2023 student assignment and it will be the last one of this student assignment series. In this video, we're going to look at the overall marking scheme requirements. We're then going to look at the SOLIDWORKS element of Output 7, so how that compares to Output 3, and some pointers as to how to model in SOLIDWORKS in Output 7. And then we're going to look at the um, hard copy outputs that are on page uh, 1 and page 2 of Output 7, what you should inclu include in those pages, the annotation that you're going to do there, and the photorealistic images that go with that. And then finally, we'll have a look at a suggested layout as you can see here and um, for output 7 page 1 and page 2. So to start off with then we'll have a look at the marking scheme and as you'll see here here's a comparison between pre-2022 output 9 and the current output 7 and you'll see that they're actually the same um, but now what we have is that they've just kind of cleaned up the marking scheme a little bit. So you'll see in it, originally they had all of the stuff in for your application of your CAD skills and then kind of pigeonholed in these last couple of bits. But now they're all part of um, the CAD model and the factor of difficulty. So that's the factor of difficulty five marks plus the application of CAD skills five marks. So they're up in the 10 there. And then you still have the same 15 marks then go for the hard copy outputs to come from, from this output. So looking at the marking scheme requirements then, um, the main ones are over here with the hard copy output. So the different views that you need to so your detailed orthographic, your sectional and detailed views, your render pictorial views, your photorealistic images. This one is a change from what used to be output nine in that the photorealistic images used to go into um, a page on their own, whereas now, because this is two pages long, the photorealistic ones are going to be put into the same sheet as the working drawings are. Um, you want the inclusion of the main dimensions, notes and symbols, appropriate scaling, and then your layout and presentation to be considered. Now, that's what's written in the um, in the marking scheme, as well as the stuff about the CAD, but just a little bit more detail about, about the CAD models. Depending on which type of project you're doing, so a design modification one versus a concept design one, your requirements for your SOLIDWORKS files are slightly different. So if you're doing a design modification, you can have multiple part files because you're uh, modifying your output three artifact. So some of the parts are going to be identical or very similar to your, your output seven ones. Um, so you can have your different parts in your assembly. Okay. Now there's nowhere that says that you can't have that for your concept design, but your concept design is generally going to be easier and is going to work better if it's in a single part rather than doing um, multiple parts. Um, with both of them then you're going to have your factor of difficulty and you're going to have your design intent is going to be really important but if you have uh, multiple part files like in the design modification you're going to have an assembly because you need to put those together. The idea of having your assembly is also the reason why it's easier to do a single part for your concept design because as you'll be aware of at this point when you're doing your output 7, that when you go to put together your SOLIDWORKS parts like you did in output 3, um, they can often not assemble properly, whereas if it's in a single part then it's... Um, not, that's not going to be a problem, okay? But when you're modeling your single part, it's a good idea to ha to model things as if they're separate, but to model them as they're as, as if they're different um, solid bodies, okay? So you could have multiples of your solid bodies, but not different parts, just for the the sake of making your life a little bit easier. And again, as I say, the factor of difficulty in your design intent is still going to be is still going to be in there. Now this slide is a really important slide because it's a question I get asked a lot and it's a very important one to take into account and that's what's the difference between your SOLIDWORKS model in output 3 versus output 7, okay? Now the first thing is that output 3 models are generally going to be parts and assemblies and output 7 is going to be um, one single part with solid bodies inside it. but. The bigger thing here is the amount of marks that go for each one, okay, and then therefore the amount of time each one should take. So in output seven, so in the second one, there are 10 marks altogether going for your CAD model. So there you have your CAD model and your factor of difficulty or design intent, 10 marks there. Whereas when you were doing output three, okay, you have 22 marks go for your SOLIDWORKS modeling, okay, so over twice the amount. So you have your creation of your five parts is two marks. Uh, or your minimum of five parts. Um, you have your part models then are going to be worth 10, your factor of difficulty and your design intent worth five, and your assembly worth five. And that means that the amount of time that your first model should take compared to your second one 
is roughly twice the length of time, okay? And with that then, that also means that your second one doesn't need to be nearly as complicated as your or as accurate as your first one. Now, you want to try as much as you can to keep your both of them as accurate and to scale and everything as you can, but it's uh, it's much more important with your with your first uh, your first model. With your second model, you're trying to get a, across your concept design. So, the amount of detail you're going to have in a concept design at this point is not going to be anywhere near the level of um, of the first one that you did, and that's purely because somebody has has um, designed your the first one that you did, so it was an existing one. They put a lot of time and effort into it, and really thought thought about the practicalities because it had to be produced. Whereas with your one, you're coming up with a concept. You're not at the point where you know exactly how everything is going to get or how it's going to be produced. That will be done later. Okay, so you could give this to somebody or give this to a company to um, get it to the point of production. But that's not what you're expected to do here. You're expected to communicate a concept design, okay? And that's reflected in the amount of marks for SolidWorks. So just all the time when you're doing this, just bear that in mind when you're thinking about how complicated your concept design needs to be and how much detail you need to have in that. Mostly taken from the Output 3 presentation that I did, but just with a couple of little changes. Um, you'll see that you have your SOLIDWORKS modeling fundamentals, and at this point, you should be pretty proficient with SOLIDWORKS, so you should know this stuff kind of at this point anyway. But when you're talking about design intent, you're talking about using relations and equations, and to use adaptive feature end conditions to so avo avoid blind if possible. Um, this is also a good time to look back at this and to see, well, did you make sure you did all of this in your, in your Output 3? Okay, so have you used relations and equations and so on? In your SOLIDWORKS sketches, you want to select the most appropriate sketches for your features, and then you want to ensure that all your sketches are fully defined. Then with your features, again, you're going to choose the most appropriate one and rename all the features. So again, go back and have a look and make sure you did that for your first one. And then when you were doing your first one, I recommended doing three um, surface features. With this one, I would just look at getting one because it's only going to be it's only going to be one part, but it's good to show some um, some surfaces in your in your modeling. Then before you start modeling um, this um, concept design, then what you want to do is similar to in your output three, you want to get an A3 page, sketch out your sketches that you're going to use in SOLIDWORKS and your features that you need to use, and then devise an order that you're going to complete each one. And once you've completed that, then that's the time to ask your teacher whether or not it's realistic or if they'd have any suggestions about different things that you might do, because um, it's much easier to, to answer those questions before you start rather than during, because you don't want to have to make any changes. And then after that, it's time to start modeling. And again, just remember the marks are half the amount for the first one. So your detail doesn't need to be half the amount of detail from your from your first one. So just just bear that in mind when you're when you're thinking about your model. Moving on then to the hard copy outputs that are going to go into this um, output. So you have two pages, so page one and page two. Um, these are going to be um, taken from working drawings that are done in SOLIDWORKS, so draw SOLIDWORKS drawing um, documents. So on the first page, you'll have, or it's just having dimensional orthography views because that was asked for specifically, a full pictorial photorealistic view that will be made on PhotoView 360 in SOLIDWORKS itself. Then your design requirement one view and design requirement two view. So that could be done um, as a sectional view um, or some other view, a detail view like that, but you need to decide which one works best. Um, you'll see there, I, I mentioned that down here, the types of drawings that would be good to have in these pages. So sectional views, detail views, and part views, um, which you've uh, created display states for. Um, then on page two, a render pictorial view, um, a design requirement three view, four and five view, and then photorealistic view of your favorite aspect of your design. Okay, so what you'll have in there is that you're always trying to talk about the requirements when you're talking about these um, views to make sure that the person that's reading it understands where each one of them came from and why you have them in your in your drawings. And that that idea of why you've used something is is a really important idea because you want to make sure that there's a why for everything that you do in these pages and throughout the project. And that brings us nicely on to annotating output seven effectively. So with your SOLIDWORKS drawings, you want to label the type of view directly underneath. So that could be an elevation, a plan or an end view or a detail view or a sectional view. You want to use arrow annotation to justify your chosen design solutions um, by explaining what the view is communicating, um, how the chosen design solution links to your five design requirements. Okay, it mightn't be all the design requirements for each one, it might only be one or two. And then why your design solution is the best available. Okay, there are good things to try to talk about, okay, when you're when you're doing your SOLIDWORKS drawings. 
you don't want them to be too long you want them to be this succinct you want them to be short but that's what you're trying to that's what you're trying to get across then with your photorealistic images then you want to place the title of the image directly underneath it again and use your uh, arrow annotation again to answer so what's the image showing uh, why is the is the aspect of design that the image is showing important and how does the image link to the um to any or all of the five design requirements okay we're always linking back to those design requirements in this in this page so looking at the photorealistic images in output 7 then um you're going to be creating those using the photo view add-on in solidworks and then you can further edit them in photoshop but that's optional so you don't need to do that okay but if you're if you're proficient with photoshop then by all means you can do that the two images should be created and then and should add value to the overall communication of your concept design. So you don't want those images to just be a carbon copy of other um, views that you have in this output. Okay, You want them to be separate and on their own that they're showing something else. The image resolution is vital. So when you bring an image over from photo view into your SOLIDWORKS, you can only ever make them smaller than when they're imported in. If you make them bigger, then it'll get pixelated. And that's a big no-no when it comes to your photo view um, images. Okay, so your photorealistic ones. So be careful with that. And um, that's the same in the rest of your project as well. So if you're putting images into output one or any of the other outputs that require images, you can only ever make them smaller than how they went in okay if you make them bigger they will pixelate and um, the eJoins app on ios or android can be used to create augmented reality photographs so you can it looks like they're actually in in um in the room that you're in uh, you don't have to do that but some people like to put them in and then you can use your display states to show and hide parts of your model if you need to so if you want to use your photo view images to look at a particular um piece of your of your um concept design then you could use display states to hide some of the other bits for when you're doing the when you're doing the, the um photorealistic image and remember then that simplicity is the key uh, when you're planning your photorealistic images okay you don't want to be talking about any kind of complicated things there because your working drawings are more um they're more specific and they're easier for you to actually look at things that are more complicated because you can have hidden detail and things like that whereas with your photorealistic images it is just like it says photorealistic so um you're going to be just a little bit more general when you're talking about those ones so then this slide will look familiar to you as well because this is the same idea as when you're formatting your solidworks drawing pages in output four um what you're looking to do is you're going to have your 10 millimeter border you're going to have your title block um this will be output seven obviously not output four um you'll have your solidworks watermark down in the bottom corner which again used to be bigger before and um, is smaller now so it fits inside your 10 millimeter border and then you'll have your projection symbol um down in the in the bottom corner as well to make sure that the person is looking at it knows what type of orthographic um, views you're actually using and don't forget with this you have the the option of making this a template so if you've done it already for output three then you can just um use a template again and just change what goes into the title block and finally then the layout i would suggest for output seven is output seven page one i'd have your orthographic views a design requirement one and design requirement two and then a full photorealistic image of your of your object that should balance out quite nicely and then on your second page i'd have design requirement three four and five a large rendered pictorial view and then a photorealistic image of your favorite part of your concept design just with that the reason i put the render pictorial view on page two and the full photorealistic image on page one is that they're going to be reasonably similar so we just don't want to have them on the same page okay and then just remember once again that you won't have the bottom corner down here because you'll have your um title block and then the solidworks um watermark goes in the bottom corner but that's no longer really an issue when it thinks when you think about doing these ones so thank you for listening to this video and watching this video and watching all of the other videos I did in this 2023 student assignment series. I hope you found them useful. And again, if you have any questions, please put them in the, the comment down below. Don't forget to like this video and subscribe if you found it useful and share it with your, your friends so that they can get the information as well.